Hey guys, welcome to your next PHP front to back video. In this video, we're going to be creating a simple contact form and we're going to use most of the stuff that we've learned up to this point, as well as the PHP mail function and a few other things. Okay, we're also going to add a little bit of server side validation and set up error messages. So I'm going to create in my PHP sandbox, I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call this website three and then we're going to create a new file and save it as index.php. All right, so this is the one file we're going to create. We're going to put all of our HTML here, our form, and we're also going to process the PHP in this file. All right, so let's go ahead and add some basic HTML tags. And for the title, we'll just say contact us. All right, now I do want to use Bootstrap just to make things look a little better. So I'm going to use Bootswatch which is basically just um, customized bootstrap templates. So let's grab this Cosmo and I'm just going to grab the link up here. Okay, and then we're just going to say link rel style sheet and href and then paste that in. And you guys probably see me use this boot swatch a lot and the reason I use it is because it's really easy just to include the link and it makes it look a little better than just standard bootstrap. But if this was a, were a, a production application, I would install bootstrap using Bower or something like that and include it locally. All right, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and add the markup. First we have the nav bar and I'm just gonna paste that in, just a very simple nav bar and we'll save that and then let's go and visit localhost php sandbox slash website three. Okay, so there's our nav bar. Now I'm gonna paste in the form, but I'm not gonna put any of the dynamic PHP in there yet. So let's paste that in. All right, and just to go over this, it's a simple HTML form, method is post. I haven't added an action yet. And we have uh, a couple divs with a label and an input. And notice we do have a name attribute for each one. And the last one is the message, which is a text area. And then we have a simple button. And notice I put the name on the submit as well, because that's what we're going to check for up in the PHP. We're going to check to see if it's if the submit is there. Okay, now for the action, we could just put index PHP, but I'm actually going to use the server super global. Okay, make sure you echo this out. And we're going to use PHP underscore self, and that's going to submit to this file. All right, and then up here above all the HTML, we're going to put our PHP tags. All right, and just to test this out, uh, what we're going to do is check for the submit. And we're going to use the filter has var function that we learned about in, I think it was the last video. So we'll set up an if here, and we're going to say if filter has var. And we're submitting a, a post form, so we want to put in here input underscore post. And then we're checking for the submit. All right, and if that is true, then we're just going to echo out submitted. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and reload. There's our form, and if we try to submit up here, we get submitted. Okay, because it's looking at this right here, the name equals submit. Okay. So let's get rid of that. And the next thing we want to do after we submit is get the form data. And we're going to put those into variables. So let's set email. We'll set that to post email. Okay, actually, let's put the name first. So name equals post name. And then we also have the message. All right, so now we have our post variables in regular variables. And we want to do a little bit of validation. So all the fields are going to be required. So let's do that. We'll say check required fields. And we're going to do an if statement here, or an if else. Okay, all stuff that we've learned already. And in here, we're gonna check to see if each one is not empty. 
okay and there's a function called empty that we can use to see if there's actually something in there so we're gonna say if not empty email and not empty name and not empty message okay so if none of these are empty then we passed okay if not then we failed now if it does fail I want it to show out a message so up here I'm gonna create two variables so let's say message vars alright so we're gonna set one called MSG and we're gonna set that to nothing for now and one called MSG class and set that to nothing okay the reason I'm doing the class is because with bootstrap and most front-end frameworks you have you can have alerts and you can set the the class to different colors or different statuses alright so we want the errors to be red and the success to be green so down here where we failed all we're gonna do is put stuff in those variables so we'll put the message we'll say please fill in all fields and then for the class we'll say MSG class in bootstrap it's alert dash danger alright that'll make it red so down here in the container let's go ahead and test for message so we'll say PHP if oops, uh, let's see if message and we're going to use the shorthand syntax and actually we're going to say if message is not equal to nothing because it starts out as, as an empty string and if that's true then we want to put out the alert so div class with bootstrap we have to do alert and then the alert danger or alert success whatever it's going to be so here we're going to php echo msg class All right, and this is going to be whoops. This is going to be the alert. So in here, we want to output the message. Echo msg. Okay, so that should actually work. If it passes for now, let's just echo out. Passed. Okay, let's just reset this completely. Uh, undefined variable message. Oh, that should be msg. You guys probably caught that. Okay, so if we submit, please fill in all fields. If we put in a, two fields, we're still going to get that. If we put in all of them, then we passed. All right, so that's all set as far as required fields. Now, if they pass that, they're going to have to test the email. Okay, the email has to be valid. And we can use filter var, which we talked about in the last lesson. All right, so let's say uh, check email, and we're going to use if, and let's say filter underscore var, okay, and we want to pass in here the email, which is in that variable, and then we want to add filter validate email. Okay, and we want to set. We want to say if this is equal to false. Okay, then it's going to fail. All right, now we'll put an else, and this will be passed. All right, and you don't have to write these comments. I'm just using them to so just to try to explain what exactly is going on. All right, but if it fails, we're going to again set a message and a class. So right here, we'll put that in. All right, and then this will be, for now, we'll just echo out past. All right, so let's go ahead and reload this. And again, our required fields. Now, if we fill everything in, but the email isn't valid, uh, what we need to change the message. Please use a valid email. All right, so if we reload, then it says please use a valid email okay if we put in everything and we do use a valid email then it passes alright so our validation and messaging is all set 
But one thing I want to change is that when we enter this stuff and, f and we fail, it's gone. Whatever we put in the fields all goes away. And we don't want that because if we have a lot of fields here and they fail on just one of them, we want the other stuff to stay. So that's where the value attribute comes in down here. Okay, right now they're set to none. Uh, but what we're going to do is test to see if there's a post value. And if there is, we're going to keep it output. If there isn't, then it'll stay cleared. Okay, so in this value right here, we're going to say PHP. And I'm going to use the shorthand, the uh, ternary operator, which we learned about, I think, two, uh, two videos ago. And we'll say echo is set. Okay, so we want to see if post uh, underscore post, and this is the name field. So we want to say if post name is set, then we want to output name. And if it's not, then we want to output nothing. All right, and then we'll end the PHP. So let's copy that. And we're going to put that in the value here as well and just change this to email and change this to email. And for the message, that's going to go within the text area. So we'll paste that in and we'll change these to message. Change that to message. All right, and I'm actually going to use uh, HTML special chars up here. So let's say HTML special chars and we'll wrap these post values. All right. So let's save that and we'll try it out. So let's just say test one. The email is going to fail. Test three and let's submit. And we failed, but we still have our data in the form. All right, so that's that. Now we can move on to actually setting up to send the email. So we're going to use the PHP mail function, but we need to set a couple values, a couple variables before that. So we need to set up the recipient email. So the, the email address where you want this stuff to go. So let's say to email, and you want to use your own um, hosting or your own server. So I'm going to say uh, support at traversymedia.com. All right, and then we're going to set up the subject, which I guess we don't need these comments. It's pretty obvious what the, what they are. So let's say subject, and for the subject, we're going to say contact request from, and then we can actually put, we'll concatenate their email address, or I'm sorry, their name, like that. All right, then we need to create the body. Okay, so the body of the email, and you can have HTML in here. So let's do an H2. And we'll just say contact request. And let's see, let's go on a new line here. And we'll put in an H4. We'll say name. And then under that, we'll put a paragraph. And that's going to be the name variable. All right, and I'll just copy this. So we have name, email. And the message. And you can use whatever kind of layout you want. OK, and then we're going to set the headers. So let's say headers, and the first thing we're going to set is the, the MIME version. So let's say MIME-version, and that's going to be 1.0. All right, and then we're going to have to do a carriage return and a new line. So to do that, uh, let's see, we're going to say slash r slash n. All right, and then we're going to add on to this headers variable. So let's say headers. 
and you want to make sure you do dot equals because that's append okay it's not going to overwrite this it's going to add on to it so we also want to specify the content type and you can set any header value you want here but we're going to set contact type to text html and we're also going to set the character set so char set and we're going to set that whoops I'm going to set that to utf-8. All right, and then we're also going to concatenate a carriage return and a new line. And that should be good. Now we want the from. We need to put who, who this is from in the header. So let's just say additional headers. And we're going to take that variable and add on to it. And we want to add from, uh, let's see, we'll say from, and then we're going to concatenate here name. And let's use this syntax and put the email like that. And then slash r slash n. All right, so those are the headers. Now we can use the mail function, and we're going to put that in an if statement. So that this will, this will say if it sends or if it doesn't. So let's say mail. And this is going to take in the recipient email. It's going to take in the subject. It's going to take the body. And it's going to take the headers. Okay, those are the parameters that this function needs. So if everything goes okay, then we're going to set a message. And let's just go here and we'll say email sent. And we'll change this to your email has been sent. And we're going to change this to success, which will make it green. And then if it fails, let's say uh, your email was not sent. And we'll keep that at danger. All right, and that should be it. It should now send. So let's save that. Now, if you're using XAMPP like I am, this isn't going to work. Let's just see what happens. So we'll just say John Doe email test we'll just say hello for message and submit and we, we're going to get this error that says failed to connect to mail server at localhost that's because I'm using XAMPP and we don't have a mail server set up so what I'm going to do is upload this to traversymedia.com slash test alright so let's grab it and let's see htdocs and where are we uh, PHP Sandbox, Website 3, and I'm going to bring that index file up here. Okay, and then we're going to go to traversymedia.com slash test, and there's our form, and then we'll fill this out again. We'll say, hello, I need help, and we'll submit and we get your email has been sent. So now I'm going to go to my Gmail account and I'm going to pull that down and there it is from John Doe contact request from John Doe contact request we have the name the email and the message alright now that may go to your spam folder especially if you're using uh, Gmail or Yahoo or something like that it, it, it's kinda hard to really uh, figure out why it's going to spam um, if you go, if you if you use better SMTP settings, you may have a better chance of it not going to spam. But uh, that's a whole nother subject altogether. But I just wanted to show you how to create a very simple contact form using the PHP mail function. All right, as well as some validation. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We're gonna keep moving along in this series. Um, now it might be a couple days between episodes because I'm really busy right now. Uh, but I do want to definitely get into databases and MySQL and all that. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next episode.